Good morning, folks. <clears throat> Sheepdog Smokey here. Beginning week three of work from home, shelter in place, all that good stuff. And unsurprisingly, we're seeing the same from liberals all over the country, that being more hate, more division, and more demands that they be obeyed about everything. Before we get into it, as always, please remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're aware of all new content as it posts and you're part of the giveaway that I'm doing at 500, 1,000, and 1,500 subscribers. That said, let's go on and dive in. Today, I mean, was a, and of course it's yesterday by the time you're watching, but it's just a normal lazy Sunday for me. Uh, as always, I did my laundry. We, uh, had dinner together with my parents and nephew, brother, my aunt and cousin who live next door. Uh, just a normal Sunday for us. And it was basically normal for a couple of raging liberals who are now probably going to be crying about being held accountable. The first, you have Laura Krolzik, I believe that's her name, Roswell Park Hospital in, uh, or Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center in Buffalo, New York, on Facebook, demanding that, and I quote, Trump supporters vow to give up respirators for others. She also demanded that you not cash your, pay, your stimulus check, which is stupid, it's direct deposit. She also demanded that you barricade yourself in churches to ride this out and just choose some ibuprofen and get on with it. This is not what the country needs during any type of viral pandemic or viral outbreak. We never need one part, one party or one side of the partisan aisle demanding that the other side just lay down and die already. Yet, this woman in Buffalo openly stated that she demands Trump supporters not seek medical help for coronavirus. Remember, just a short two and a half months ago, maybe three, uh, when it all started and Trump began working to stem this the spread by travel bans and other things, he was vilified as racist and hateful and xenophobic. We had people, mayors in Italy, telling the, the citizens, hug the Chinese people you see so you're not racist. We had other liberals here in the States telling people, oh, go to Chinatown. It's not a racist epidemic. It's not a problem. You had an idiot health official in New York telling people, go to restaurants, go to bars, ride the subway. Now that all of those things have been proven the idiotic things they are, they blame President Trump for not just taking power and controlling their state. I've told a couple on Twitter that they should openly cede 100% of power over their state to the federal government, fire the entire state legislature, state courts uh, officials, and resign all the way up to the governor, so that the president can run the state. But they have to do that, you see. It's called states' rights. They're very quick to scream and cry over states' rights whenever Trump does anything they don't like. But when he's not doing something he has no power to do, they demand that he just do it. And this is just, to me, more proof that they should have no power in any form in any level of government. But it's not the only example that we see. Following on this, this theme, as we've seen in the past, we have a Rhode Island middle school teacher openly tweeting, although from a throwaway account until she was found out, and I quote, someone with COVID-19, I will pay you to cough on Trump. No, I am not saying that. I am reporting it, and I will, of course, be posting the links to all of this. But we saw nothing happen to the woman who said if she was infected, she'd go to Trump rallies and cough on people. This woman will probably have very little retribution. Now, the medical worker from Buffalo has been fired. I don't know if Amy Bednaz from Villanova Middle School in Rhode Island has been fired yet, but she's openly advocating that someone work to infect others because this idiot teacher doesn't understand the basic fact that she's not queen of the world. Just imagine, in 2009, if someone had said the same thing, but under President Obama. 
for crying out loud, they ruined a man's life over a rodeo clown skit that had been going for many years because the only mask he could find was an Obama mask. This man's life is still in tatters to this day because some liberal got offended. But when a liberal does something like this, it's ignored. I mean, the uh, Roswell Comprehensive Care or Cancer Center fired that doctor or that medical worker, whoever she is, but will the middle school that Amy Bednoz teaches at fire her for openly basically saying, commit biological warfare? I heard a great analogy uh, about this uh, from Hannity, because people are complaining that Donald Trump is racist for banning travel from China and other places. But imagine if foreign fighters snuck into the country dressed as civilians and as tourists and were planning an attack. It would be up to the president to ban travel from those countries and to find the people who are planning the attack and stop them. Yet we have teachers like this Amy Bednaz who tweet from a throwaway account advocating biological warfare, and so far I've heard nothing has happened to her. Now, I will say... This appears to have happened very recently, so we may hear something tomorrow or Tuesday, well, today or tomorrow for you, and I do honestly hope she loses her job. I have taught in public schools. I know for a fact many of the people I worked with, my co-teachers, would not agree with me on much at all politically. We were not there to be political. None of us were, none of us ever should have been. We were there to teach our subjects and to educate the students. You only really need to look at what happens when someone does something like this on either side to see the bias in the legal system and in the media. Had a conservative said anything approaching this in 2009, they would have been destroyed living, you know, in a tent in the woods because it's the only place that they could get any peace. But when a liberal does this, it's ignored by the main, mainstream media. And it shouldn't be. Look at the movie, God's Not Dead, the first one, where it's Melissa Joan Hart, and she is asked a specific question when in class. And that specific question was about the person of Jesus Christ. She answers that question, and another student lies to his parents and says that the teacher is proselytizing in class. She wasn't. She was asked a specific question. I am a history teacher. I teach history. If, during world history, I am asked a question about Christ, Buddha, Muhammad, any of them, I will answer the question. I will not put any spin on it. I am not there to force my views on the students. I am there to teach them history. You cannot then demand that I be fired for answering the student's question. The teacher in that scene did not begin the lesson and start talking about Jesus. She was asked a question by a student and answered it, dragged through court and ultimately exonerated. It's a great movie. I would recommend it to anyone. All of them, really. But just imagine if in a history class someone had asked a Muslim teacher about the, about the person of Muhammad and they had answered the question and obviously been very clear that they are Muslim. And then a, a student complains. That student would have been told not to be racist, probably expelled or at least suspended for spreading lies about their teachers. But when the teacher is Christian, the teacher is punished. And I don't agree with that in any way. I don't want anyone proselytizing for their faith in the classroom. If a student approaches you on your personal time and asks you a question, answer it. But do not punish teachers for doing that later. We have a teacher advocating biological warfare, and I personally want her fired.
teaching credentials revoked, never to be allowed again. She can go flip burgers for all I care. I don't want anyone, conservative or liberal, who would do something like Amy Bednoss did. And no one else should want that either. Yet, because she's liberal, she will probably be quietly transferred to another school and told, just don't tweet about it and let it go so that we don't bring attention to it. Which is wrong. I don't know. I've talked about it long enough. I'm getting upset. I don't want to be. I'm going to go watch a movie and go to bed since I have work in just a few hours. As always, please remember to like and share the video to expand the conversation. Be civil in the comments. We can be civil, as I've said on others. If some of these large personalities, Pelosi, AOC, Bednaz, whoever, show up and start trying to defend their idiocy, I will be bluntly honest. Just, I won't be vulgar. But for the rest of us, we can debate civilly. Please do so. Always as well, please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you're aware of all new content as it posts. Until next time, stay safe, stay smart, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.